Sweater. Back in January of 2022, I managed to get an interview with one of the people who worked on Bully 2 around 2013. As many of you know, Bully 2 has been cancelled multiple times, mainly because it's a very low priority compared to games like Grand Theft Auto 5 and Red Dead Redemption 2. In this video, you're gonna get almost 12 minutes of non-stop insight into what Bully 2 had to offer at this stage of development, what the development process of the game was like, and a little bit about how Rockstar operates. This really felt like a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, so I made sure to have a list of topics nearby. Topics that I personally found interesting, and topics that I've seen a lot of people in the Rockstar Games community speculate about. Out of respect for the person that I spoke to, I've decided to keep them anonymous, and because of this, I've replaced their voice entirely in this video with a text-to-speech. Nonetheless, everything you'll hear is verbatim taken from the conversation. So with all that said, sit back and enjoy. So, just give me the first bullet point and then I'll give you a short-form answer. Okay, so... Uh, Tom Henderson tweet. Like, is there anything to it? I, I assume you saw it. Tom Henderson, I did not see the tweet. If you can give me reference. Okay, I, I could quote it. Yeah. So he said, Bully 2 was expected as a potential surprise reveal at the Game Awards last week after some people were... So let me stop you now. I don't have any insight into what they're developing now, so I couldn't say either way if it's true or not. Let me give you the background on what I've played and what is real. I played the Mad Doc original version from 2013. So it was being developed in 2013 and it was 6 to 8 hours of a vertical slice. That vertical slice encountered Jimmy looking a little bit older. So if you think like the Into the Spider-Verse new trailer you see that Miles Morales looks a little bit older. That's how Jimmy looked. Jimmy looked a little bit older. He was a little bit taller. He still had the same build, still had the same scars, facial structure, but aged at least 6 months. It was gonna take place after uh, the summer after Bullworth Academy first year and he was back in his hometown. Down. Story beats wise, they already had I wanna say 16 missions. The missions that I played were like, you had to rescue kids from like a summer camp camp crusty style. So you had like full Native American garb. You were dressing up. It was a lot of unique outfits, similar to the first game. So you could dress up as a Native American chief. You had like a tomahawk. That was gonna be a weapon. You had boomerangs. There was a bunch of stuff that they were experimenting with. Nothing of the sort was final. So working at Rockstar you have to understand that nothing is final until Sam and Dan say it's final. So we were building. The reason why I was the lead on it was because a lot of the influences that we had working with Mad Doc, which ended up being Rockstar New England, which ended up being subsequently shuttered, um, they get feedback from us. So New York runs everything. North runs Dev, but New York runs North. Anything that goes anywhere. Rockstar San Diego. Rockstar Toronto. Rockstar London. Leeds. North. Everything is run from where Sam and Dan are at any given time. And that's always New York. So having that understanding, you need to understand the game was like I said. I gave the quote 6 to 8 hours playable. They didn't quote me as the lead because it's unannounced. But I can tell you right now since it was unannounced it's on my LinkedIn. They're never gonna admit to it. So no one's gonna admit to it but i was the lead on it i'm not gonna give you the names of the other leads the other like producers and any of that stuff because it's not it's ether if it exists it exists on a hard drive and no one's looking at it and if they improve upon it you'll be able to see from the reveals if they have something and if they built on it they built on it from code that they reworked possibly after they did rdr2 stuff so that being said go ahead next bullet point okay so I just want to ask real quick, like, was there anything uh, planned for how the game began and ended? Like, is there any beginning? No, it was pure sandbox. Okay. If you think about it, like I mentioned, it was fully rendered, fully realized. So the idea, the middle chunk of the most important parts of the game loops were there. You had go-kart races. You had lawnmower efficiency. Sort of like you got a Mulan's under time constraint. So like all the mini games you have in GTA, but in a cooler Goonies and like weird, you know, summer vacation. Americana summer vacation style. So you have to picture it as the world was super vibrant. It was super green. It was the opposite of the gray and dark. It was super green. A lot of the concept art is real. So that stuff was all already pre-built in from Mad Doc, Rockstar New England. I hate calling them Rockstar New England cause that's stupid. I think Mad Doc is a cooler name. Whatever leaked from Mad Doc that was all realized in this vertical slice. You got to do beekeeper missions and then you would gain immunity from bee stings. You could use the beehives as weapons. There was the bow and arrow with like a plunger at the end of it. There was non-lethals, so it was still gonna be a teen game. There was nothing overtly. They were gonna skirt the line between being teen and mature. So he did have the, I'm the one that they quoted for the bulge in his pants. 
He did have the bulge in his pants. So when he walked around in his underwear at Bullworth, there was no bulge but this had bulge. So what is a mature game and a teen game when Bully Original came out got sort of skirted in this one. So they were gonna be a little bit more risque and push the line as to what a teen versus mature game would be. And we would automatically have to get feedback on whether or not something was overtly, like, compared to other games, was it overtly sexualized, violent, or all that other stuff. You were gonna be able to have pets as friends, dogs, so the dogs will remember you. You could treat dogs well. It's the same that you see in RDR2. Pretty much all the ideations that came from the feedback that went into RDR2 for pets and people remembering you and missions that you do and then they get remembered later on were all ideations from Bully2. It was gonna be cool. It is. It was cool. I'm probably one of the only. Like there's probably like a handful. Not even two handfuls. One handful of people that played this. It was probably the Housers, myself, and the producers that were on it. So, and whoever was at Mad Doc that was working on it obviously. But in terms of people that played it fully realized, like this is the vertical. Like that was ready. But yeah, anything else? Next slide. So something that like people would, will kill me if I don't ask about is uh, clicks. You know, like uh, the- Oh, you mean factions? So the factions. The faction system was gonna, uh, you said cliques. They were called factions. The factions that they had were gonna be the prefects. So that you could actually be like a camp counselor instead of being like part of the- Like I said, we were building ideations. These were items that were getting on the cutting room floor. But they did have the faction system. So the faction system was gonna be built into the AI that Mad Doc has built up for the remembrance system. So if you're working on one faction and you do something that adversely affects your faction, they kick you out the faction. That's how it would work. It was, it sounds super technical but it really wasn't. It was just a script that said if X then Y, if C then you're and you get kicked out of the script. It caused a lot of problems early on and the vertical didn't have it fully fleshed out. But yeah, there was a faction system, there was a remembrance system, and there was a sort of light mass effect style choice or good versus evil playthrough. Same as the first game, but it was more in depth than ever before because Bully 2 was a PlayStation 2 game. Or Bully, pardon. Bully Original was a PS2 game that they, I worked on. I was a lead on the Xbox 360 and Wii Press scholarship edition. So the Wii port had like the motion controls, other side missions that you could use the motion controls with so I worked on all that I sorry, I actually have a dev kit from Rockstar New York from around that time with a build of bully scholarship edition on it that's dope that's dope so uh, Sean Lee mentioned he was possibly gonna do the soundtrack he said that around like 2008 yeah yeah, it was bare bones. It reused the assets from Bully 1. It still had that funky boom 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 boom. It had that bass line and all that. But it was a, I want to say a more stripped down of Sean Lee's cause it was temp. It was temp. Nothing was finalized. So the vert slice was super bare bones in the aspects of what was gonna be. Like we were gonna get soundtracks. We were gonna like everything. It was gonna be merchandise. Like I have the bully dodgeballs. I have the bully bat. The cricket mallet even though you can't play cricket in the game. Like I have a whole bunch of bully so like, it's weird to like see what they were gonna do at what was in and have it not come to fruition. But if they have something in the pipe that's fine. I doubt that they have it. I wanna say that. I think their bread and butter is trying to fix Red Dead Online and continue with GTA Online and then work on 6. That's it. That's what I know is happening. Okay, so you have like no hopes for Bully 2. I do, um... I would be the opposite of who I am as a person to say that it's never gonna happen. I am gonna say that the version that I played is never gonna happen. Okay. So there will be something subsequential. I don't necessarily think it's gonna be what I played. And what I played was f awesome. It was just. It was the PlayStation 2 version but like kicked up like 150%. It was way awesome and like. They would have to make allusions to like. If it comes out now they're gonna have like Stranger Things callbacks and like. Stand by me callbacks. Like I said they had the Goonies callbacks. The Camp Krusty from the Simpsons callbacks. They had the Porky's callbacks with the underwear and the panty raids and like that. There was gonna be panty raids. There was gonna be breaking and entering. So you were gonna do B and E's. The cops were gonna be involved. So if you get arrested too many times you start losing a lot of stuff. So it was a lot of breaking and entering gameplay around it. But it was more condensed into the environment of having that tongue in cheek like. Oh this kid is gonna go to juvie or whatever. But there was no juvie missions or anything like that. It was more like. It's like the prefect system. If you get caught by a prefect you end up in the slammer. Or if you get caught by the local PD. You end up in the slammer. You get bailed out. And you lose all your stats and you lose all your so there was going to be a cost benefit okay um i want to ask you like did any other characters from the original game uh make a return yeah Petey's in it was i don't know if he is a bunch of his other the mainline girlfriends there was going to be allusions to gary being some like a big bad like behind things but like i said nothing was finalized for the big bad but everyone was returning everyone that was important in the main storylines like the teachers you were gonna see them in like lounge like you could see them in there uh i forget the name of the teacher the science teacher the big african-american professor or the guy that the p 
people, the teachers that you saw in the artwork were gonna be scattered around the town. And they were gonna be sitting in like lounge wear, wearing like, you know, Hawaiian shirts and shorts and like, Birkenstocks with socks. And you would try and approach them and they'd be like, school's out, Hopkins, get out of, you know, they would you off. So that was in, that was cool, like oh you see this guy, you see this guy, but like, it was not to bring you back to the original, it was to bring you to the next sequence which is the new game, you don't want to go back to school, you're in preparation to your next year, so everything that you were gonna build was gonna build to your next year in school, the classes were, like I said, replaced with jobs or time sinks, like mowing the lawn, beekeeping, go-kart racing, so you were gonna have like a career as like a semi-pro go-karter, like the little rascals type stuff, it wasn't fully that you were gonna have classes, I had made a suggestion that they have like summer school, like that you fail but there was no way to track it from scholarship. So, how would you build that? Maybe he takes extra credit, like for a 100% of the game, cause I was 100%ing, every single Rockstar game I've 100%ed. It's insane. So, the 100% marker for the achievement, I wanted it to be called extra credit, and the extra credit was you end up finding a place somewhere in the world and you end up taking a course, and it's all the skills that you built. Skills that you built throughout the game put into one test, and it's like physical activities, like you gotta shoot targets, and all that other stuff, but you only find it if you're at the end game, like post end game, like, you've done everything and the only you gotta do is like get collectibles, do the rest of the jobs, and blah blah blah, and then you unlock the class, and then the class gives you the 100%. That was a pitch that I floated, and there was a lot of other people who were floating that as well. Okay, so, um, seasons. Any, any seasons? It was intro of spring and intro of fall. There was no winter. It was tail end of spring. So like little dwindlances of some like. In the morning you could see like dew on the grass. Like the individual blades of grass system was phenomenal. It was better than what it looked in RDR2, surprisingly. But they had a really big, like naturalized system of the trees and the foliage. Flowers, trees, grass. The RDR2 stuff is also phenomenal. So I wouldn't be surprised if it was built off of the ideations of that. But yeah, they were gonna have all those systems. So, yeah. Final two minutes. So, any Easter eggs you guys had planned? I think I just mentioned them. The teachers being in the lounges. I gotta look back on. I took some notes before we had this call. Easter eggs would be the dodgeball that you get as a physical item. I think the outfits. All of the outfits from the school were gonna be in your wardrobe as well. Unlockable at the end game, or the new variants of them. So you'll have the Halloween costume like from Karate Kid. I don't remember Easter eggs. Like I said, the vertical slice wasn't gonna have the vertical slice we were gonna build on. So it was like what do you want this to be? And we were just given 25 to 35 pages per person. So I gave tons of ideas of my life to the studio. And you know, I moved on. I stopped working there after the tail end of Max 3. Max 3 was very difficult. I didn't see any of 5. I enjoyed 5 immensely not having worked on it. And RDR 2. Not having worked on either of them. But what really broke me was L.A. Noir. That was like a nightmare. And Max 3 was so dope but like no one gave a about it. People are gonna go back and be like this is a hidden gem because that game is phenomenal. It's one of the most hyper-violent. It's like playing John Wick. Like it's John Wick before John Wick. And I don't understand why it got such a bad rap. But I guess people didn't like that it was like 70 gigs when it came out. But yeah, that's it. That's all I got, brother. It's pretty safe to assume that I'm never gonna get a chance like this again, so please consider giving this video a like, and also please consider sharing the video with anyone who you know might be a fan of the game, or just someone who's interested in video game development. Anyway, that's it for this video, you folks, as always, stay classy. Peace.